Little kids, I work with grown up as well. So normally I tell my kids, go into the homework. Okay? If you don't know what's going on on the race course, they come to me and, Tomas, what should I do? I may tell them something and that, you know, things may change, and then the other thing is they're never going to learn. The day the coach is not there, it's just like they don't know how to start. They made it to a big regatta, and then they're like, they're like, what should I do? Okay? So it's, it's a little bit about understanding, you know, what's going on. So we go out. Uh, we start trying the course. What is the wind doing? Is it going right and then coming back to the left? Is it going too much to the right and then back to the medium? Or is it going all the way to the left? Understand if, you know, what's the wind pattern? Uh, direction wise and strength wise as well. Is there more pressure on the left? Is there more pressure on the right? I need to understand and a lot of that is something you can actually see. If you, if you look up wind, I mean, that's the easy part. Yeah? You can see the puffs coming more because of here it's easy to see them. There's other places where it's a little bit harder. Current, what is the current doing? Last weekend, it's going down really hard, okay? Um, and then knowing a little bit the area, is there a channel? That means if it's deeper, the current's going to be stronger. If it's a little bit, um, if it's shallower, the strength is going to be different. And also, if you have a really long course, I don't the like current, that. the way the current goes, it's not, it's probably the odds if you're close to shore, it's not going to be the same, you know, everywhere. Yeah, come on, so, uh, for big regattas, what I normally do is, you know, I, I go out early and, you know, I, I measure the current on the starting line, on the wing mark, on the reach, I try to see what's going on downwind. So then, I, obviously, I have, I can check what the tide's going to do, but I can tell my sailors, hey, the wind, the current's going down. But, you know, on the course, how is that impacted? So, Thomas, how do, you, how do you measure it? Well, normally, the, the easiest way, water bottle, if it's really windy, just like leave this much of air on the water bottle, a little bit, because if not, it's just going to sink. Just get close to anything, you know, to any of the marks, just put it in. If you leave too much air, the current, basically, the wind's going to take it down. If you, some people use a sponge, for instance, there's different ways. So, basically, if, if this is the one mark, I go close, I just throw something that floats, get a timer, one minute. How much is, is it going to drift? Because many times, just by looking at it, you, you don't really get it. Sometimes it's more the wind that is just pushing all the weight. But, you know, when you, when you grab something, and, and actually the good thing with that is you can, you can see how, uh, what's the heading of the current. Because um, so sometimes, let's say this is a one more mark, we have the, the wind coming down this way. Um, and you know, if there's not a lot of current, probably it's just, you know, one minute later, maybe, you know, depending on what you throw, maybe it moves a little bit, or it goes this way, or it goes this way. It's just a matter of, you know, just keeping track of what's going on. And also, it's good, you know, to do the homework as well of knowing when is the tide going to change, okay? So depending on that, and where the mark is positioned, is the way. Um, that's Before we start, we do our homework, we sail a little bit with a partner, get an idea of what the wind's doing, know what the current is doing, um, and then we get to the starting line. Once we're on the starting line, um, so we have a pin, and we have a Tommy Eagle. Okay? So, I was watching, and, and I saw Eric every single start, what he was doing, he was coming in, middle of the line, get head to win. Okay? If this was the case, line is even. If he was pointing towards the wind, and this was like this, basically the bow is pointing towards to, closer to the boat, the boat is favored. If this was the case, the pin was favored. Okay? Eric was doing this every single start. And it was like, you, you, uh, I mean, I was paying attention to the wheel mark, and every time I, I was watching him and other sailors out there, it was not a question of how oh, he was like. I mean, there's work behind that. And the minute after he did that, he was trying to look upwind to see is there more pressure here, is there more pressure here, you know. Um, something that impacts a little bit, um, first we decide where we want to start, okay. Then we have the information about what's going on on the upwind, okay. With that information, we, we need to make a plan. But it's important to try to balance, you know, where you're going to start and where you want to go. Because, you know, Last weekend we had 16 boats. The laser is one of the biggest classes. I went to events where we had 110 boats starting on the starting line. So only on where you position the starting line will determine where you're going to go. So as a rule of thumb, if you want to go right, 
let's say for some reason there's more wind, less, less uh, current, uh, more pressure, um, you have a clip over here that normally gives you a lift, any reason, for any reason you think the ride is the place to be, the odds are you, you want to start close to the race committee. Um, the same thing, you, for some reason you think the left is the place you want to go, then you should be starting closer to the pin, but it gets tricky. And that's normally the thing, it's just like, okay, yeah, I want to go left, but the boat is so much favorite that I don't know what to do. And then it's when you need to start thinking, okay, what are you balancing? Is the fleet big? If the, if the fleet is really big, again, you, you need to start finding a balance. Uh, I had one of the coaches when I was a kid who was always telling me, you have, basically you have um, a short-term advantage and a long-term advantage. The short-term is the start. And the long term is what you think you're going to get from the upwind. The problem is, he was always telling me, like, I would always bank into the things I know are going to pay off and try to find your way across. Um, but it gets tricky, okay? So, again, you always, you always want to try to balance where you want to start with, your, with where you want to go on the first upwind and try to find a balance into that, okay? If you want to go left but the boat is favorite, maybe start middle boat try to find your way across, okay? If it's really favorite, if the odds are, you know, you're gonna start and you're already ahead of it, not really paying attention. Just just even before the gun went, you know, Johnny is two bullets. I mean, uh, the two lines represent basically one bullet. Uh, so just you're off the line, it's okay. we start right now. Johnny's two bullets behind, okay? And so that we get an idea, on a 10 degree, if, if the line, instead of being square, it's just like 10 degrees off, the, the, how much difference you gain from starting from, you know, the favorite end, basis the non-favorite end, is 25% of the length of the starting line. So basically, let's say the starting line is, we're in a really big regatta, it's 100 feet, uh, sorry, 100 bowlines, um, basically, the guy that's starting from the favorite end is starting 25 uh, bow lengths ahead of someone that is from the non-favorite end. Let's go to something less radical, let's say, just 5 degrees, right? Sometimes it's even hard to notice if the line is long. That's 12 and a half, okay? Which, you know, it's already making a difference. It's, it's already making you um, put in a... Kind of like in a, in a bad position. One other important thing, I'm, I'm not telling you here to start on board. <laughs> it is the way that the model is, but you wanna, there's there's a couple of things that give you an idea of you know which one is the favorite head pretty easy. And I you know I, I sometimes work with eight year olds that are starting to race, and I tell them, you get to the starting line, sail through the race committee book, trimming your sail to the corner, pay attention to your telltales. If it's really hard to get off the line on Star Wars attack, that should trigger in your brain that the the pain is favorite. You know, and the other thing is, you can tell that the pin is favorite, sometimes late, but the moment you just trim in, just to get off the line, it's just like, you realize the line is really high. Um, different when, when, for instance, the, basically the boat is favorite, it's really easy to be over, okay? So, you know, it happens that when, when it goes a lot to right, people are that trim in too early, you see a lot of people over, okay? so. Normally, the easiest way, because again, it is, and let's say, Tomas, I did what you told me, but the wind is like going back and forth, back and forth. You can't really get it, start from the middle. And just wait, uh, work your way across, because you know, if, if you're not too sure, and sometimes when the line is too big, hey, I love what you told me about, like, I go to the middle of the line, but it's huge. It's really hard to tell. Get a partner get a time and say like, okay, let's start. In two minutes you start from the pin, I start from the boat. Someone has similar speed from you, similar experience and skill level. Try the line, go back. Hey, the race committee is taking too long, do it again, okay? And try and, you know, then it's just a matter of keeping and paying attention of, you know, what the wind's doing during the season. So, when you know, let's say, uh, let's say the pin, the pin is favorite, and you can tell, um, if you watch any of the, you know, the, the, the races from the Olympics, you will never see the guys that do well, you will never see them start 
there can be a couple of uh, exceptions, but they will never start from the rear. The odds are they're going to try to move a little bit, and just start in a way they can, they can get off the line, and they don't risk so much. I mean, you can, you know, people can win the Olympics without even winning one single race, and it has to do with, you know, risk and reward. Sometimes, like the more in the laser that you have, you can have a hundred boats on the starting line. Maybe you're going to have two guys, or three or five, that are going to have a great start. Maybe they win the race, but they, then they try to do the same on the next one. Maybe they get stuck. Okay, but maybe you can have another guy that is, instead of starting just by the favorite end, you move a little bit down the line. Maybe you don't win the race, but you get a top ten. And all top tens are going to keep you consistent. So it has to do with risk and reward. How much do you want to risk? How much do you want to get? Maybe, yeah. I mean, a whole tag, a whole fleet, and I won the race. Try to do it again. But stop, I got a 44. I'd rather get a 7 and a, and a 10. For sure. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, again, risk and reward. How much you want to risk? I know it depends, you know, hey, it's the last race, it's the Olympics qualifier or whatever. And it can make the difference and you really need to win the race, go for it. What does a great start mean? Anyone? Getting off the line with speed, able to do what you plan. That's it. Freedom and speed, okay? So basically it's, it ends up being that. Obviously, you're able to do this here and you know everyone's like way ahead. Awesome. You actually achieved that, but I would, I would only include close to the favorite end of the line. Okay, because, yeah, it makes a difference, but again, if you're just starting, you don't feel comfortable, I, I'd rather, you know, as you start getting more confident, you start getting closer to the group, okay? So next start, okay, I won't start here, but I'm going to start like halfway through, so basically I'm below everyone, I'm just, the moment the guy, the gun goes, I wait, and I keep on waiting, and, you know, you can still fail. If the weight goes back to the other side, then you're back in contention, okay? It's just a matter of waiting. Only the mark uh, where the... The Yahoo mark is position is not gonna determine 100% where you're gonna start from. But given that the other day it was pretty short, it starts, you know, in the equation it starts paying a little bit more importance, okay?